Now Fred has gone to the bottom of the cliff and collected his baseball. He wants to see how long he can throw the ball and keep it in the air. Fred throws the ball at 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the x-axis. How long is it in the air? A projectile that's thrown vertically or at an angle will go upward until it reaches a peak and then it will fall back down. At the peak, the y velocity is at zero meters per second. You'll notice that the x velocity, just like in a horizontal projectile, it doesn't change because it has no acceleration. At the peak, the velocity in the x direction is not equal to zero meters per second. It still has velocity in the x direction. So let's, let's look at his throw in more detail. His ball started with an initial velocity at 30 degrees above the horizontal. An initial velocity of 20 meters per second. I'm going to write v naught, not v naught x or v naught y. It is the resultant, the overall velocity of the ball that's 20 meters per second. To solve the problem, we need to break it into x and y components, so we need to find the x component of the velocity. And we need to find the y component of the velocity. Once we've found those, we can break all of the motion into the x and y components and solve for time. So how do we find v naught y and v naught x? We're going to use our sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So as a review of trigonometry, if we have an angle with a 90 degree, if we have a triangle with a 90 degree angle, and we know, or we have a, an angle called theta, the, the, um, the leg of the triangle opposite it is called the opposite leg. The leg adjacent, that means right next to it, but not the hypotenuse, is the adjacent leg. And then the longest uh, leg of the angle, the part that's opposite the 90 degrees, is our hypotenuse. In our calculators, we can use the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent to solve problems finding these parts of a triangle or the angle. And the rules are sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That is so. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent of the angle, tangent of theta, is the opposite over the adjacent. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, not in radians. If you have it in radians, you'll get the wrong numbers. So every time you do uh, trigonometry for physics, make sure you've switched it into degrees. We won't be using radians in this class. So to find our initial velocity in the y direction, our angle is 30 degrees. We need to find our opposite leg, opposite uh, part of the triangle. We know the angle and we know the hypotenuse. The sine of our angle, sine of 30, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. To solve for v naught in the y direction, we're going to multiply both sides by 20. When we put this into our calculator, we get v naught y equals 10 meters per second. This is our general equation for v naught in the y direction. It's equal to v naught sine theta, which is what we ended up finding here. You can learn this equation, or you can use the trigonometry to find it each time. Next, let's get the velocity initial in the x direction. Notice that our angle is right next to this velocity in the x direction. So this is going to be our adjacent, uh, our adjacent part of the triangle. For adjacent, we use cosine of theta. Now we're going to plug in our numbers. We plug in our values and we get our initial velocity in the x direction is 17.3 meters per second. 
The general equation for initial velocity in the x-direction is it is the initial velocity, the overall initial velocity, times the cosine of the angle. So now let's use our initial velocities to find how long it takes his ball to fall. To solve this problem, we'll write what we know about the motion of the ball from the time it leaves his hand until the time it hits the ground. In the x direction, we know the acceleration is 0 meters per second squared. We've calculated the initial velocity of 17.3 meters per second, and that's not going to change, so it will always be 17.3 meters per second until the end. The initial position is 0 meters. We don't know how far the ball went, so we don't know the final position. In the y direction, we know the acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We calculated his initial velocity in the y direction, and it's positive because it's going up, of 10 meters per second. We know the initial position we can define as 0 meters in the y direction. But the ball falls back down to the ground, so its final position in the y direction is also 0 meters. We're going to use this information to help us solve the problem. So to find the time, we're going to use the second equation, and we're going to look at motion in the y direction. This is our equation. Now we'll plug in our values. We're going to simplify 0 and 0. We end up with these two terms left. And we will get one of them on the left-hand side by, by subtracting it. Since we know that the time in the air, t, is not going to be equal to 0, it has some time that it's in the air, we can divide both sides by t to simplify the problem. If t were 0, we couldn't divide by t, because you can't divide by 0. But if you know it's greater than 0, you can divide by a variable. And now we can solve for t. So the time that his ball was in the air was 2.05 seconds. 